Got another question on the electrode potentials topic and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you wanted to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So we've got these three systems, C, D and E, and from the information here, we've got to establish the um, order of the standard electrode potentials. So we'll start with the left-hand one. The giveaway here is the sign of each electrode. So the most positive um, electrode potential is the positive electrode. So that's telling us that this half cell here, which is C, is more has a higher or more positive electrode potential than this one here which is system E. Then if we move on to the right hand side we've got system C again and we've got system D. You'll notice the polarity has changed so with this one now is the most positive one so that's telling us that the silver silver plus which is system D has a more positive electrode potential than this one, which is system C. So the way I've worked it out, so the most positive one is D, which is obviously going to be the least negative one. The least positive is E, which is obviously the most negative one. pH of the solution in the standard hydrogen half cell. So the H plus concentration in a standard hydrogen electrode is one mole per decimeter cubed. So we just minus log one and we get a pH of zero. So for the next part, I've written up the two half equations for the half cells. So system D is the silver plus silver and we know that its electrical potential is plus 0.34 volts. So obviously up against the uh, standard hydrogen electrode, which has that half equation and it has an electrical potential of zero volts. So if we think about how these half equations are going to run, this is the more positive one, so it's going to run left to right, which means that the hydrogen one's going to go backwards, right to left. So it's producing H plus ions as the cell operates, which means that the pH is going to decrease because it's getting more acidic. So I'm just saying as the cell operates, the silver system shifts to the right, it's a more positive one. The hydrogen system shifts left because it's a less positive one. So therefore the H plus concentration increases and as a result the pH decreases. Moving on to part C, so we're told that the cyanide ion is a conjugate base of a very toxic weak acid. So this is a base that's going to accept a proton from the H2O. So it's going to become HCN, hydrogen cyanide, which is that very toxic weak acid. So what's left of the H2O is OH minus. So if we call this B1, therefore that's A1, the conjugate acid of pair 1. So this must be A of pair 2. So this is the B of pair 2. So there's a couple of ways you can answer the next part. So you could just simply say that um, H plus ions from acidic conditions would react with the cyanide ions and form hydrogen cyanide, which is the very toxic uh, weak acid. Or you could say that the H plus ions would remove hydroxide ions and it would encourage the equilibrium over to the right hand side, thus forming hydrogen cyanide. Part D now, an important difference between a fuel cell and a modern storage cell. Well, fuel cells need a constant supply of fuel and oxygen going to the cell. Next part, an advantage of using ethanol rather than hydrogen in a fuel cell for vehicles. So ethanol is a liquid, much easier to transport or store than hydrogen. The complete combustion of ethanol, which is the overall reaction for this cell, is that there. And the next part, the reaction for the oxygen electrode in this fuel cell. So we've got the overall equation here and we've got the ethanol half equation here. So if we see we've, that's missing at the moment, the three oxygen, so that needs to go in as a reactant here. Uh, we need to get rid of, we need to cancel those out because they're not in the overall equation. So if we make them reactants in here, so 12 H plus 12 electrons. And then we've got the two CO2s. So we need three waters but we've got three there, so we're going to need six H2Os on this side. 
so that when we combine it with the other one we'll be left with three on the right so six h two o and you can see that can be simplified so we should do that so we can divide everything by three so we'll get one four four and two And the final part, so what's been oxidized, what's been reduced. So I've got my um, ethanol formula there with some oxidation numbers in. So hydrogen's obviously plus one each. So we've got six hydrogens in ethanol. So we've got plus six. That oxygen's minus two. So these carbons here must be minus two each. And then if we look at what's happening to carbon in its, uh, in its equation, you can see it's going to carbon dioxide. So they're going to be minus two, minus two. So this must be plus four. So the carbon has been oxidized from minus two up to plus four. The reduction one's a lot easier. So oxygen starts out at zero because it's an element and it goes to minus two. So that's the reduction process there.